Welcome to the sixth episode of the EPIC series, UCC Course Approval, Development, and Assessment. In episode six, we're going to look at the critical thinking checklist. Now, if you attended the professional development on how to design a critical thinking assignment, um, this, is the, uh, this is the checklist that you picked up. Like any good assignment, people should know what's expected of them. So we're thinking of your critical thinking assignment as the assignment, and this is the checklist that the committee is going to use in order to determine uh, if your assignment is valid for use with critical thinking. So I'm going to go through this and show you a couple examples of what we're looking for. Uh, again, if you have this in front of you, it makes it a little bit easier. We have the numbered state outcomes, general description, assignment goal, description of assignment specifics, explanation of the value of the assignment relative to overall grade, and then you, this, if you look at the last five here, these are actually the sections or the domains of the rubric, the critical thinking rubric that we've had. So I'm going to go to the first assignment here. Uh, we'll look at mine. This comes directly off the form that you're working on. Uh, what you'll notice here is the first thing we're looking for is that you include the state outcomes that are assessed with critical thinking. So you need to make sure that you have that list. Uh, it, was a, it was a mapped out list of which of the state outcomes we were being used for in each of the three areas for critical thinking. And then you'll notice what I did is I just go in and I just did a description of the assignment, the tug exercise. There's actually a couple videos on YouTube that go into more detail than this and actually show you how to do it. So I describe my assignment. And then what I show down here is I show what the questions of the worksheet, these questions here, these numbered questions, are the questions that the students will be asked on the worksheet that they do at the end of the exercise. And what I did on my explanation was I took the sections of the critical thinking rubric and highlighted them here. So the first two questions for me will help me assess the explanation of the problem, question, conflict, or issue, which is the first domain of the rubric. Then here you have the student viewpoint and evidence, which is actually two sections of the rubric that I will be assessing by looking at their answers to these three questions. The influence of the context and assumptions. Again, here's the question on my worksheet that I'm using to assess that section of the rubric. Conclusions and related outcomes. And again, you see the question here that I will be using to assess that section of the rubric. The other thing I include here and what we want to know is how are these this assignment related to the course goals? We want you to write and use an assignment that helps you, that helps you do what you want to do or what you want to accomplish in that class. So when I looked at my course outcomes, uh, one of the course outcomes I have in this course is apply critical thinking skills to biological issues. So what this assignment is going to allow me to do is to assess that outcome, assess that outcome. So again, we want the assignment that you develop to have meaning. We want it to be meaningful for you and the students in terms of making sure they're, they're getting the skills that they need to be successful. Assessment significance. We want to know that what you're giving the students or this assignment is significant. If it's not worth anything and it's not covered very well and you just hand them a sheet of paper and ask them to do questions, then they're not really going to put a lot of value in that. So for me, I'm actually going to complete this assignment at least twice during the semester. And with both of those, and there may actually be more, it's going to be worth a minimum of 5% of the grade. So again, if you come back to the checklist, oops, we come back to the checklist, get my mouse to work, I come back to the checklist, I then I listed my outcomes. I did a general description of the assignment. I explained how this contributes to what I'm trying to do in that course, uh, how I'm going to run the assignment, and how relative it is to my overall, overall course grade. And then if you remember, each question that I had on the worksheet related to a section of the rubric. I'm going to show you a slightly different one. Um, this is one for humanities. Um, the beginning is the same. Uh, recognize the describe humanistic. These are the state outcomes that are part of the critical thinking for humanities. It was done a little different, but it's still acceptable. Describes the assignment and what you'll notice here, what is highlighted. These highlighted areas are actually the sections or the domains of the rubric. So again, it shows us, it makes it very easy for us to see um, what this person is doing in order to assess the different areas of the rubric. Influence of context, students' position, all parts of the rubric. Here's the plan for the assignment, so we know how the assignment's going to run. 
and then again here at the bottom it talks about the weight of the assignment in terms of their overall grade so again in this case it shows us that it's meaningful what they're doing is meaningful and that this assignment is meaningful to the students and to their grade and then this person gives examples of topics so a lot of times you'll come up with a general overview of an assignment but for a lot of these there's more than one topic and so this person gives examples of topics that can be used for that assignment so again a little bit different formatting but again it gives us the information that the liberal education committee needs in order to evaluate in order to evaluate the assignment the last one I'm going to show you is from social science so here you see it listed here again you see the state outcomes listed you see the assignment description you see the goal which again we want it to be a meaningful assignment and then you get into the specifics of the assignment and again you see the same pattern here's the section of the rubric here's the question that's going to um, allow that person to assess that section of the rubric you see that going all the way down it explains in more detail what the assignment is going to do and, and what's going to happen with the students and with the faculty in terms of what is going to be expected and then again you see the weight of the assignment in this case it's 12 percent of the students grade so again it has some meaning for both the grade and for the students in terms of what they are doing so again these are just examples of um, different methods or different ways that uh, this description of the assignment can be written up and again make sure you're using the rubric and make sure you're using this checklist as you design your assignment it will help the process go much smoother